Good morning, I'm Eric Anderson from the ABR Ski Trails. We're out here in the Groomer Barn and um, we've got Rick with us again this morning um, over here that's going to help train in a couple of new groomers. Looks like it's about 6 a.m. which is our normal start time. We picked up a couple three inches of snow. We're up to almost seven feet of snowfall for the season so we've been a We've been busy, but we are trying to recruit some new younger groomers. As you can see by our gray whiskers, we do have to look into the future. So we've got a, a new guy here. He's in his 30s. Kyle. <coughs> Morning, Eric. Morning. And uh, have you ridden a snowmobile before? I have, um, <clears throat> I have some experience on snowmobiles, but uh, not so much grooming. Okay. I understand you're... Uh, just retiring from the pro class in uh, snowcross. That's correct, yep. Uh, congratulations. So, thank you. Um, and our other new younger groomer is Rob. And um, welcome Rob. Welcome. Thank you. Um, Rob's, both Rob and Kyle are avid skiers. And um, Rob, what is your snowmobile experience? Zero. Okay. I think back in 1980. All right. <laughs> I was on one. Well, um, <laughs> Why don't you pay attention then? And, uh, <clears throat> first of all, some of this might be obvious, um, especially to Kyle. But the um, Rick, why don't you help me out here with if I'm going missing any of the basics? And it's hard for us because we're so used to the okay. sleds. But um, this is a Skidoo expedition. We did a YouTube. Actually, Rick did an excellent one. It's on our channel setting it up and picking a snowmobile for grooming. This is our top choice. Um, it's got the 900 uh, Ace in it, fuel injected. There's no key, there's just a safety tether. So make sure the tether's on. You don't, we don't attach these to our body. They're meant to uh, shut the machine off when you fly off it, but we're going pretty slow. This is the kill switch. That's how you turn it on and off. Pull that out and then this is the start button. We just hit this to start it. And turn this off to shut it off. Um, it's got a two speed transmission. Um, so basically we're grooming in low. I don't know that I've ever used it in high. Um, very, very, very important. Never shift it on the fly. Any I've, snowmobile. <laughs> any snowmobile, yes. Holding your finger on the brake is probably a good idea when you shift it. And then um, this one has a reverse that's not intuitive. It's the starter button. So basically, when you want to go backwards, make sure you're at a complete stop and hit this for the starter. Hit the starter button to go backwards and it'll beep and go backwards slowly. Anytime you're backing up to a groomer, it's uh, really important to have your finger on the brake and you can feather the gas. This, this one in particular I really like. Um, my right thumb is compromised, so it doesn't squeeze the throttle correctly. So I spin it around like this and I basically use my four fingers that work fine. That's up to you for an option, but also like for backing up, if that's easier, you can spin the throttle. That's a skidoo feature only. <laughs> yeah, the bear cats are not. And then we burn um, gas, not diesel, in here, and we have a what is that? A mid-grade, like an 89 non-ethanol gas that we're burning. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and it's at the fuel dock. You want to make sure you have at least a half a tank when you head out, and kind of keep an eye on the fuel. Um, it's got a switch here for three different modes of operation. If you flick it, see it says eco mode right now. Mm -hmm. And if you go forward with it, eco off and sport mode. Sport mode is sporty. It'd be something Kyle would like, but mm -hmm. we make them run in eco <laughs> mode. And eco mode lets the uh, gives you a lot of stroke on the throttle and if you hit a bump or something it doesn't it's not jerky okay okay so brake gas 
This is the parking brake if you pull it all the way back. There is no light warning you with the parking brake. There is no beeper. So if you put the parking brake on, the only thing it tells you it's on is it's harder to get your hand on the grip. So don't try and take off with the parking brake on. Good to know. And <laughs> just as a general snowmobiling tip, if it doesn't move real easily, find out why. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there's, there's no stall on a snowmobile. You will burn the belt. Okay. If you ever smell belt, you got a notch in the belt and it's going to make noise. It's going to go thunk, 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 thunk. Okay. Yeah, a, a, belt, a belt nowadays is about a hundred bucks. Um, in the last 10 in years, dreams. how much is it? About 180. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> Even for a 383 like that takes. Well, um, I've seen one burnt belt in the last 10 years. I don't know about Rick. And I think that's yeah, a com here. yeah, that's a compliment to the operators here. Oh. Um, so they both keep that going. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna try. <laughs> so the, these are the these are the two switch. So we kind of know how to move the snowmobile. Um, one of the most important things with these, since they have studs that were on a concrete floor, is when we take off to get out of here, we want to just barely squeeze the throttle but engage the belt and don't burn it but don't spin the track so it's kind of a fine line and what I've seen a lot of the operators do is they'll just kind of wiggle the snowmobile as they squeeze the throttle very gently and if it's super slippery then we need some ballast on the back so one of us jumps on the back to weight it. They're adjusted for um, steering so basically You've got more weight up on the skis and the carbides, which is great for steering with a load, but it's hard, it's hard to get traction until you put a groomer on. So this would be, once we're hooked up, we'll be hooking up outside. The red would be for teeth. So up is up, down is down. The switches are self-centering, so they should go back to the middle. Sometimes they stick and the actuator will go click, 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 click. Just knock it in the middle. Red is for teeth. Teeth make blood, that's why they're red. Uh, black is track. The rhyme. Down is down, up is up. And Rick will show you when you're testing the groomers not to leave the actuators up all the way against the clutches where they go tick, 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 tick. Just back them off a little bit. The electric actuators that run our groomers are $500 linear actuators. They do have some issues uh, with moisture and cold and wear, um, but they are real nice for adjustments. There's two 30 amp fuses, and I believe they're in here. It's, we've talked about this in the other videos, but uh, two inline fuses. Uh, you can see that they're good. If you do uh, change a fuse, uh, make sure the old one gets discarded and not left for someone else to put back in. And there's a bag of fuses on the coffee pot. You keep a handful in your grooming outfit. Or, and then this one has a winch. It's not a permanent winch, um, but this control plugs in. And the power plug for the winch is up front. Does it have a power plug in the back too, Rick? I don't know, it has a long extension cord, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. So Eric, if we're having issues with our switches that are running our, our grooming device, uh -huh. so the first thing we should probably look at is the fuses. I, um, I, Rick has more experience with this, but I, I see them wiggling the plug in the back first. Okay. <clears throat> That's easier. You know, the, the, uh, the connections, you know, they do get worn. There's two little uh, half circles in there and they get squeezed together so they're not making good contact. But anytime you hook up, you definitely want to make sure your teeth and your track setter work. And the other thing that's um, good to do before you leave is check that you have a shovel. 
a clippers, and a chainsaw. And if you're track setting, you want a track rod. They, some of them have some tools in them. Um, this is for scraping the track pan if it ices up. Uh, a lot of times we have a little hammer in there too that you can tap the plastic gently and then scrape any ice off. The ice comes from the heat exchanger, dropping slush on the trail and then going through it or if you go through some wet snow. What obvious uh, items am I missing? Uh, hand warmers, that's more of a comfort issue. Um, this is the hand grip right here, up, you just go up with it. This is the thumb warmer, up, down. If your hands are burning, make sure you turn them down. Bright lights. And then the M and the S is for the gauges. I probably wouldn't recommend monkeying with that uh, too much. Rick, Rick has them set up with uh, important parts like temperature, time, uh, things like that. And both of these skidoos are the S, SE model, special edition, and they come with the air shock. So we have that air shock cranked up to five. Five means it's really stiff in the back, and that's good for a groomer. If you're going to trail ride, we'd put it down to two or something like that. Any questions? I'm sure there will be. Yeah. <laughs> Anything I'm missing, Rick? Um, well, for adjusting your heaters, as soon as you hit that switch, gas gauge and the temperature gauge turn into indicators for this is the fuel gauge, this is the temperature gauge. Okay, I just hit it. Now, see, this little icon is for the grips. That's the maximum, which hopefully you'll never want. This little icon is for the throttle, and that's your indicator. You've got however many bars there are here, nine or ten different adjustments. The Articats, you've only got high or low on most of them. The gray ones, you've got like four different adjustments, and they'll show up in the gauge also on the fuel gauge part. So, miles, RPM, what you don't need to know what you don't need to speed. know. Speed, normally your speed's going to be. 6 to 10 depending on if you're dragging or tracking. Water temperature, that will get up to what, 210 or so? On the skidoos that'll get up to 216 and it'll go back down to 200 and then just bounces up and down. Here's a little glove box for some spare fuses or um, ribbon. We won't go over uh, changing a belt or anything like that because we're going to assume everything's going to be working right now for the purpose of this video. What we rate as the number one grooming machine is the uh, Articat Bearcat XT7000 Groomer Special. And this one's actually not a Groomer Special but it's been made into one. Um, what The things that make this the, the number one grooming machine is the Articat gives you a lot stiffer suspension adjustments than any other snowmobile. They've got a fiberglass overload spring, they've got methods to adjust their springs that tightens them up better than any other snowmobile. And they come with a three speed transmission. You've got super low, low and high range plus reverse. These have a mechanical reverse, so you have to stop the machine completely and move this lever from super low to reverse. We do all our grooming in the super low position, the lowest gearing you've got available, because that's the easiest on the belt, and it'll go as fast as you're ever going to need to, even if you're not pulling anything. We tried it and they'll do 45 or 50 miles an hour in super low. So. Does it really go that fast? Yes. Okay. Um, controls are very similar to the Skidoo's, obviously throttle brake is standardized for all snowmobiles. Emergency kill switch, which is what you use for a key on the Skidoo, it's going to be a little confusing guys, but you don't use these on the Articats, because we do have a key, and if you don't shut the key off, some of the things stay powered up and we don't want to do that. So, we ask that you 
don't use the kill switch on the Arctic cats. You shut them off with the key. They also come with an emergency tether switch, which you can clip to your jacket. We don't use those because we're doing five miles an hour. Um, gauge is a little bit different on an Arctic cat, but it provides similar information. Controls for your uh, hand and thumb warmers are 90 degrees different than the Skidoo, but basically they do the same thing. The low side turns them down, the high side turns them up. Dimmer switch for the headlights, your basic controls. Um, hmm, what else do I need to cover here? Rick, when you're grooming, do you use your mirrors for anything, or are you looking back sometimes? The, the mirrors that Articat gives you are very useful. Um, basically, we keep them, well, you can adjust them for your personal height and where you sit on the machine and whatever. But yes, you can use the mirrors. You can see your teeth on your grooming implement behind you with, if you have them adjusted properly in most conditions, unless it's really blowing and billowy snow. So yes, they are useful. You can use them. It makes it a lot easier on the body. You don't have to be twisting your neck around all the time. So yes, you can use them. Remember, these are 30 and uh, these are the 30 year old bodies that we're talking about. They can still do this motion. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Now all of our Arctic cats have winches on them, which are all mounted on the front. And three out of the four of them have the winch switches mounted right up on the handlebars. Some of them are clamped over here. This particular one is right here. They're marked out and in. As long as the cable is rolled on correctly, that marking is accurate. Uh, before you grab it with your hands, make sure which way it's going to go. If the winch cable gets wound on backwards, then the switch will be backwards. So that only happens when they get dragged all the way out. So now if I go off track, where the snow is going to be a lot deeper, off track, either turn it or roll it or roll it over, how, what, how do I get <laughs> back up right again and, and that kind of thing? <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> first time maybe you would call for help. Uh, generally because the, the Arctic cats weigh like 860 pounds the way you see them or a little bit more. The skidoos are about 100 pounds lighter but at any rate nobody's picking that up by themselves. So if you can find a way to string your winch cable to pull it up with the winch that's what you do. Otherwise you got to call for help and somebody else will come with another machine in a winch and pick it up that way. Because even with two guys, and it seems like whatever you tip it over, it's going to be tilted downhill anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that makes it all the harder, you know. Mm -hmm. You don't generally tip it into an uphill where it's easy to just Try to shovel the one side off and just wait till somebody gets there or... Yeah, or and if you do go over even though these are dry sump engines, uh, and theoretically they will still oil themselves no matter where, because everything's fuel injected now, they'll keep running. They don't care. It can be upside down, the engine will run. But shut it off immediately when you go over, because we're not 100% sure that the oil system would work properly, and we don't want to run them out of oil, of course. Is the fuel line to shut off or no? Or anything no, like that? no, no they don't have any shut offs in the fuel systems, but. You shut the machine down and yeah that's really important <clears throat> mm -hmm. we haven't well we have had one sled where the guy got ejected and to the ditch and he couldn't shut it off and the machine uh, what did it get oil on top of the cylinder and yeah that one was sitting upside down for quite a while and some oil leaked from the crankcase up past the rings and into the combustion chamber and it's hydrolog you know, you put liquid in a combustion chamber mm -hmm. and it's not yeah. supposed to be there. Well, liquid's non-compressible. So that one we had to pull, well, they, I wasn't there, but they had to pull the spark plugs out, crank it over, put the plugs back in, and then it started up, so. Yeah, just get to the kill switch as quick as you can. And okay. So, uh, this one has a beacon 
and uh, work light. Some of them have the switches up there. This one's always hot. The LED light's pretty handy for seeing what you're doing. Your partner won't like it if he's behind you, so you might have to aim it down if, if he's right on your tail. Mm -hmm. what, when you're grooming, can you back up at all when the attachment is hooked up? You can try. Um, yes, basically you can. Um, probably not with the teeth down. So if, if you're in a situation where you're trying to cut hard ice or something and you get stopped or whatever, you're going to want to pull your teeth up first thing. Um, you can back up a little bit with the track pan down. In fact, having the track pan down will help you because that kind of takes the weight off of your grooming implement, makes it move more easily. So yeah, you can back up a little. Like if you can't make a turn, you can back it up and then get get another shot at it, you know, a, a machine length or whatever while you're hooked up. And yeah, it'll make a funny jog in the track, but they'll have to live with that, you know. But yeah, you can back them up. Uh, we're going to talk about getting stuck too or for the video or just Yeah. Kinda... Well, no, I think we should talk talk about getting stuck because everyone gets stuck. Okay. Um what we like to say is, we never get stuck, we just get stopped. <clears throat> and the explanation for that is, the, the number one goal when you're operating a grooming snowmobile is never spin the track. <laughs> no matter what you're doing. Starting off, going up a hill, getting unstuck. Because spinning the track, all it does is dig a hole and make things worse. So, if you get in a situation where even if you're going up a hill, if it starts slipping and <laughs> having a feel for traction on a snowmobile is kind of something that you have to learn, but if you can feel it when you're driving a car or a truck, you'll probably be able to feel it with this too. And the first impulse everybody has when the sled starts slowing down from the track slipping is give it more throttle. Well, that just makes it worse because it spins more. Mm -hmm. So what we always do here is whenever the track starts slipping, you let up on the throttle. <laughs> you don't just let completely off. You just back out of it gradually to try and get it to hook up again. And you can, with the low gearing that these have, you can go down to, well on these, like three miles an hour. The belt's still locked up and pulling, and the machine will keep going on a fairly steep hill, even at three miles an hour, surprisingly, <laughs> as long as you've got traction. If it slips and you can't get it back, stop. Do something else. Don't let it spin. Don't spin it when you're stopped, because you're just going to dig a hole. So you either, depending on your situation, you can disconnect your grooming implement and then you can drive this because the sled will take off immediately once you disconnect and then you can drive up and down the trail a couple times and pack it or if you're slightly off and missed a turn come at it from a different angle when you rehook so that you're back on the trail you're good to go last ditch situation where you can't do that or it's you think it's too steep or too deep get your winch out Usually around here, most of the hilly sections where you're going to get stuck, they're in the woods. So hook your winch cable around the tree and pull yourself up with the winch. But I think like a day like today, we've got a good, hard, wide base on the trail. You know, if you fall off the trail, you could get stuck. But if you don't, if you follow the trail with three inches of powder, um, you shouldn't have any problems. And the main thing is like feel feel when the sled's starting to go off the trail and you know if you can let's just pretend it's going let's say it's going off to the outside turn and brake hit the brake and, and wiggle and give it some gas but hit the brake to give the skis a little more purchase and try to get it to come back up but if it doesn't just stop and unhook or winch 
winching. <laughs> winching is easier than unhooking. Whether it's quicker or not is debatable. Yeah, yeah. These the groomers are fairly heavy. They're between 300 and 800 pounds, and these. Bearcats will pull that nine foot Ginsu, which is in the 800 pound range. And then you add a couple hundred pounds of snow, it's close to a thousand. The skidoos will pull a seven foot Ginsu. And then, you know, the other thing that's obvious, but as you're going up a hill, if you're having a problem or even anticipate a problem, lift your teeth up. And you can do this on the fly, you know, just hold it up. And then when you get to the top, you can put them back down. You know, the uphills don't necessarily need the teeth. Um, if you run the teeth, it'll get the uphills harder for the skaters. But, you know, getting up the hill is more important in some cases. And also, along the same lines, even if you're out on a skate lane or whatever, but you can put your track pan down. If, you, if you're not setting track, you can put that track pan down and that'll help lift the groomer a little bit out of the snow and it'll pull easier so it might help you get up the hill without getting stopped. So. Yeah, that's, that's pretty critical. Not a lot of people know that. Um, the, the track that you put in in the skate lane, the skaters will chew it up in mm -hmm. five minutes anyway, mm -hmm. so that doesn't matter. You know. And then... Um, if you're going up a hill, let's say you're out at Windy Ridge or whatever, you know, there's different parts of that hill that are harder than another, and you should be able to tell just by looking and the feel of the sled. So if you're on the far right and uh, you start losing traction, drift over to the center or to the left and just find out where that hard spot is. And then um, we won't need them today, of course, because we have three inches of powder, but the scratchers are pretty key. You can probably show them better from your side, Rick. Okay. What these are is a device that they're made out of a steel spring. They dig into the trail and they spray up snow. What they're for is, or they spray up ice particles, actually. The reason we have to have those is all current snowmobiles that I'm aware of use a slide rail suspension where the track is actually supported by a plastic strip on your aluminum extrusion. You got a bunch of wheels in there but they're just a supplement, they're not enough. That plastic strip requires lubrication as it runs over the steel clips in the rubber track. That lubrication comes from snow and ice flying in there. Well, in our case especially, when we're running on a hard packed room trail, you don't have any snow and ice flying around. And plus, we're running at about, well, we're running slow anyway, slower than the average trail rider. So once again, the stuff isn't flying around. So when we're, when we're re-grooming a hard packed trail, we gotta put these down. Otherwise, you'll go about a half a mile and these sliders will start to get hot. Uh, uh, when you're not pulling an implement, you'll notice when your sliders get hot because you can feel it just like the sled has the brake on. With these, it's harder to feel it because they're geared so low and you're already pulling, it feels like you have a brake on. But when the slides get hot, the plastic will start to get, uh, when it gets hot enough, it'll actually start to melt. And if you let it get too bad or then when it gets hot and you're trying to figure out what happened and you stop, the slides will actually stick to these metal clips and then it's like the parking brake is on permanently. <laughs> then you have to lift the sled up, get out a pry bar and pry your track loose from the melted plastic. I think you can smell it. It smells like burning candles. You'll no smell it. No indicator light or anything like that. No. no. So that's just feel, I mean, it, feel and smell. Yeah. Right. And, and your senses. Rick, the experienced groomers will always get on the radio and each remind each other. <clears throat> Looks like a scratcher day today. And then um, put them down. But the only problem is you got to remember they're down if you're going to back up because you got to put them up or they'll bend. Yeah. I mean, they're $65. We go through a couple of, every year, but it's it's nice to not bend them. The ones we use, you can't back up on. So. 
Any other questions? Are you guys ready to hit the trail? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm sure there will be a few that come up along the way, but uh, yeah, I'm excited to attach some equipment. So does this 860 pound snowmobile intimidate you over your 400 pound race sled? <laughs> it's going to be a little bit more to handle. It's yeah, about twice the weight of what I'm used to. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, good luck both of you. switch. I'll lower my teeth. Yeah, put the teeth all the way down. Oh yeah, that one's, you don't have a red switch. Okay, I want to be careful here not to hit my wire. See, that's, no, that's almost enough to get it on a hitch. He's not lined up perfectly here, but close. Okay. Just now maybe lower, there and lower your teeth lower my and teeth again. Right on. Other way. Yeah. Um, I know you're old enough. I hope you don't have back injuries. Lift with your legs. You know, don't bend over and yep. try and lift one of these like this. Mm -hmm. Lift like this if you have to. You know, or something you can even cheat and, and use your legs a little bit, yeah. but, okay. but you know, always use the teeth to help you as much as you can. Mm -hmm. There will be some situations where they won't lift it as high as it did here and you're still going to have to lift, but anyway. Yeah. I've noticed sometimes you use like a log or a piece of wood yeah, it and, does, does it, and place matter. it under the teeth yeah. um, just to help get you a little bit more height for when you're hooking up and detaching your groomer attachment. Yep, that's correct. Um, okay, another little lesson with the Ginsu's, which is, these are, Ginsu is the brand name, uh, yeah, and the red ones are uh, Tidtech, yes. <laughs> Tidtech G2 is their model designation, and these are, uh, I forget what the hell Ginsu model designates these, but anyway. With these, which is what we use most often, these pins are for weights. Depending on conditions, you can use one weight on each side, two weights on each side, or no weights on each side. Uh, today, especially considering you're going to have two people dragging in front of you, you can leave the weights on. Normally in soft snow conditions you will run with no weights, but it's not real soft. Like if we get at 10 inches of snow, even though it will be dragged, you're going to be running with no weights, or whoever's track setting will be running with no weights. I think today we'll be okay leaving those on. If, you, if you're having a problem, because sometimes the Ginsu's have a problem flowing snow through even with the teeth all the way up. If it's balling up with snow and pushing it out the sides, we never want to lose snow off the sides of the trail if we can help it because you never know when the snow is going to quit. So if you've got weights on and it's not flowing, you can stop and just, if you have to, you can dump them off out in the woods somewhere. Usually with the Arctic Cats, you can put one weight on each running board. The sled won't know the difference if you have to take them off. That's what I do. I have only had to do it once or twice. Put them in the box. But That's if you have to leave them out in the woods, just kind of make a mental note or put a stick through them or something so you can pick them up at a later date. You know, if, if she's pulling so hard that you got to take them off. They won't fit in the box? Um, or just too much of the back then? Well, yeah, they would. And I guess on one of these it wouldn't matter. Okay. Yeah, you could do that too. So, okay. anyway. 
Today, I don't think you'll be running any teeth. You won't have to, you know, because you got fresh snow to work with, and you should be good. You should get a decent track just with the tracks that are down. So.